Hi and welcome to the third lesson in my series on Earl King and his guitar playing. In this lesson we're going to take a look at some of the chord progressions that Earl King used in his songs. If you're an experienced player and you know all your chords and you're comfortable with, I don't know, chord changes and you know all the different ways you can switch chords and different song patterns and you may not find this too interesting, but if you're a new player, a beginner, or someone who hasn't been playing that long or who's new to the style, this is some really cool stuff. And when I listened to Earl King's guitar playing, that's one of the things that jumped out at me, was how different his chord structures were in his songs. And it's nothing terribly complicated, it's just different. And so what I'm going to do is take you through five of Earl King's songs that have some really cool chord changes. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. The chords are all pretty simple, it's just the way that he uses them that's different. So let's start out with the tune, the first tune on my tab list is called The Things I Used to Do. And this is a standard blues tune that was done by Guitar Slim in the early 50s. And Earl King, as I mentioned earlier, really liked Guitar Slim and idolized him and played, played this song partly as a tribute to him. Now when Guitar Slim did things I used to do, he used three chords. I think he played it in F with a capo. So it would be E position, he played it in F. We're just going to talk E right now. Earl King plays the tune in E. And if you were normally playing the things I used to do, you would just play a 1-4-5 thing. And let me just kind of strum through the chords and show you the song, and then I'll show you Earl King's version, which is different. Things I used to do. When he gets to the 5, which if you're playing a 3 chord progression is a B7 or a B, Guitar Slim's version and most other people's versions of the song, they just go from the 5 chord to the 4, which is an A7, to the 1. And they have some kind of turnaround over the 5. Now, when Earl King does it, he does it like this. Let me just take it from the, from right at the end of the verse. I can't do it from the five because he doesn't go to the five. But let me take it from like the four in the previous verse. Instead of going to the five, four, one, Earl King does something totally different. He goes to the two, which is an F sharp. I'm just playing an F sharp bar chord, first position, and I'm strumming primarily the bass top four strings, bottom four strings, to give kind of a thicker sound. I can't tell exactly what he's playing on the recording, but it sounds like he's doing something similar. So it's like this. So he plays the 2 instead of the 5. Then he goes to the 4, which is still the A7. Then to the 1. And over the top of that he's playing as... Or whatever he's playing on the turnaround. So there is an example of one of the chord variations in Earl King's playing. Now this may violate some copyright laws or of some kind. I hope it doesn't, and I'm sure I'll hear about it if it does. But I'm gonna, in the background, I'm going to play along to the Earl King version and show you what I'm talking about. Oh, 
thing. That one little chord variation makes the whole song sound. Now another song by Earl King that has kind of a cool chord shift in it is a tune called Always the First Time for Everything. And I'm going to go ahead and just play along with the song and show you the chord changes as we go through. If you've never heard this tune before, it's in the key of A. And you'll see there's one kind of chord change, a little different than what we did in the last song, but kind of the same thing. We're going to go to the 2, which is going to be a B. You'll see how that's used in the song. I'm going to play this for you. Again, copyright, police, be darned. E7, A, E7, that's the 5, back to the 1, 4, and then to the 2, 5, 1, 5, one more time. another cool progression and again he just takes a normal pretty basic progression thing on the chords. I know you guys who are experienced probably know this stuff already, but if you're just starting out, this is something that you may hear people talk about. Go to the one, the four, the five. But basically, if we're playing in the key of A, we've got a scale starting on the fifth fret of the sixth string. A. And the first note and the eighth note in that scale are both A. That's an octave. So we got one, two, so when I say the two, that's the chord whose root is that note, which is the second note in the A scale. So in this case, that note is a B. So we're going to play a B for our two, which means we can play a chord as long as the root is in the scale of the chord or the key that we're in. So the four, one, two, three, four, that's a D note. We're playing D7. We could play D major. That's not what the song is. So, and the five, two, three, four, five. That's an E, and we're playing an E seventh, whose root is that same note. And the one. That sounds like when he's playing that. Sometimes he plays it without the pinky on the eighth fret of the second string. Sometimes with it. If you want to get that specific. What I'm more interested in, you can listen to the song yourself. What I'm more interested in is showing you just some different types of chord progressions. So that's a tune called Always a First Time. I think, I don't know if it's Always a First Time for Everything or just Always a First Time. Now our third tune that we're going to go to is a, a cool song called My Love is Strong. It's a slow tune. And again, I'm going to play along with it and show you what I think he's doing. There's one place where I'm not really sure what's going on. But I'll show you my theories or my possibilities. She's going to play an E flat. Maybe in the in real life he was playing in D or E, and it just in the recording came out E flat. Maybe E flat is where he liked to sing, and he has a couple different tunes. One of his most famous tunes called uh, "Those Lonely Lonely Nights." That one is also an E flat. If you listen to the recording, let me play along with it. 
and I'll show you what he's doing as I play, and then I'll show you again without the, the back backup track. song, I listened to it carefully, I don't know if he's playing this, I'm just playing that almost to simulate the piano. I'm more interested here in showing you the chord changes, not so much what the guitar is playing exactly. So keep that in mind. You could play something like that if you were playing this without a piano or in a small group. So the main verse, he just stays in E flat, I think he's playing an F shape here at the 11th fret. He goes to an E6 and he just takes his E F shape, E flat, and E flat six, I should say, and drops his pinky in on the 13th fret of the second string. And he kind of vamps it, so it's like this. Then he goes to a C minor, and I'm doing a C minor like this, where I'm just making my F shape, taking my second finger off, and then moving my first finger to get the top three strings at the eighth fret, first, second, and third string with my first finger, and then my ring finger is getting the tenth fret of the fourth string. It's a C minor. Now he may play, be playing it some other way, but that's what I'm hearing. There's other ways to play a C minor chord too, and who knows. So the tune, like this. Then back to the E flat. And then he goes to the, the 6, which is actually a C7, same as this, but I hear it being played down here on the neck. Then he goes to the 2, which is an F sharp, and then to the 5, which is a, what is the 5? Hang on. My love is strong. What is the five? The five, I'm just not thinking. It's a B flat seven. Same as this. Played with the C seventh shape. Then back to the one. To the five. So let me do that whole progression here. So he's on the one through the whole song. Da 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 da. Now, if you listen to country blues, like I know there's a couple Lonnie Johnson tunes that I like from the 20s and 30s that have chord changes like that, kind of a ragtime chord change type thing. So we're going to the six, two, five, one. It's kind of a jazz, jazz change pattern. So that is a tune called My Love is Strong, and there's another example. And then he also has the minor, he uses the minor chord in there, the six minor. So when you're playing what I call four chord progression, like a doo-wop progression, so something like this. Like in an old 
50s tune. That's kind of where that comes in. The 6 is usually a minor. But you can also play the 6 as a 7. 6, 2, 5, 1. 6, 2, 5, 1. And there's another example. That tune is called My Love is Strong.